there. In this video, I'm going to show you how to do division with polynomials. So I hope you remember long division. Notice that this problem is actually set up for long division. But I'm actually going to make it a little simpler for you. We're going to do something called synthetic division. Synthetic meaning fake. Okay, it's not that we're doing fake division, it's just that we're kind of using a trick here. So the first part of the trick is to not use x minus 4 here. I want you to set that equal to 0 and solve for x. So I'll add 4 to both sides, so I get x equals 4. So I'm going to use a 4 here instead. I'm going to put a little box to keep it off to the side, because that's the thing we're dividing by. Um, the next thing I want you to do is to take the stuff that's getting divided, okay, and use all of the coefficients. So for instance, the coefficient of the x cubed is a 1. Here is negative 2, negative 5, and 3. Now notice that we have an x cubed, an x squared, an x, and a constant. There are no terms missing in between there. That's good. If it does happen to be missing terms, we want to use a 0 to represent its coefficient. But we're good with that. So I'm going to come down here. I'm going to put our coefficient, so 1, negative 2, don't forget the negatives here, negative 5 and 3. Okay, so our first step, we set the uh, x minus 4 equal to 0, we're going to use a 4, and the second step, we took the, the coefficients. Okay, here's the actual division part. And it's funny, because we're not actually going to divide anything. I'm going to leave a little space here, put a line. I'm going to bring down this first coefficient. That's 1. So I'm always going to just bring that down. The next step is to multiply that number with this 4 over here. So 1 times 4 is 4. I'm going to write that answer right in that space. Okay. So again, we multiplied the 1 and the 4 to get 4. And now we're going to add these two numbers. So negative 2 and 4 add together to get 2. Okay. You're going to keep doing that process until you run out of numbers. So here I go again. Now I have the 2. I'm going to multiply that with this 4 outside here to get 8. And I'll write the answer in this next space. Okay, now I add. So negative 5 plus 8 is 3. And I still have more numbers, so I'm going to keep going. Here we go with the multiplication. 3 times 4 is 12. Put my answer right here. Now let's add those. And I get 15. Okay. So here's where the magic happens. It turns out that these numbers okay, are actually going to give you your answer. The last number is always the remainder. So notice that our remainder is 15. That means that uh, x minus 4 didn't divide evenly into that cubic. This is going to be your constant, this 3 here. What comes after a constant? That would be a linear. And what comes after a linear? That would be a quadratic. So here's our answer. We get 1x squared plus 2x plus 3, right, there's the constant, and I'll write r15 for remainder 15. Okay, so that's how you're going to divide polynomials. And if you wanted to check to see if you did it right, all you would need to do is multiply this quadratic times this x minus 4, and then add a 15 on to see if you get this cubic. Let's try another example. Okay, so another division problem. First step, set this equal to 0. Solve for x, so now I got negative 1. So that's going to be the number outside here. Okay, coefficients would be 2, 5, and 3. So I brought those down here. Excellent. We are set up to do our synthetic division. Leave my space here for a little line. Okay. 
remember the step. You first bring down the 2, whatever number is there. Next, I'm going to multiply that 2 with this negative 1. I get negative 2. We always add down, so that gets me 3. Now I'm going to do this process again. This number here is 3 times negative 1 is negative 3. Add those up and you get 0. I'm going to make a little note right here. Since the remainder is 0, do you remember what I just said in the last problem, what that what might mean? Since the remainder is 0, x plus 1 is a factor of 2x squared plus 5x plus 3 because it divided evenly into it. So that's good to know. So there's our remainder. That makes this the constant, and this is the linear. So our answer is 2x plus 3, and since the remainder is 0, I'm not going to write r0, right? So this would be our answer right here, 2x plus 3. And I'll just show you. If you multiplied 2x plus, sorry, yeah, 2x plus 3 times x plus 1, I'm just doing this out quick here, here to show you something. Notice you get 2x squared plus 5x plus 3. Perfect. Now, why do you need to know this? Let's do a problem that actually requires you to do synthetic division. Okay, so we're going to solve this problem. Now, if I'm going to solve an equation, I always think the easiest way is to graph it. So I'm going to get out my calculator. Okay, so I'm going to type in the cubic. So 2x cubed plus 9x squared plus 14x plus 15. And I want to know when this equation is equal to 0. So I want to see this cubic zeros. Let's do a standard window, so zoom 6, to take a look at the graph. Okay, so here's our graph. Um, I'm not really sure what's going on up here. Let me just change my window a little bit just so I get a better picture. Uh, let me move the graph up to uh, y max of 20. Okay, so I do see a 0. Look at that right there. It looks like negative 3. Um, I'm just going to check it on the table. So second graph table, I'm going to look at negative 3, and yep, good. See that? We have a 0. Let's write that down. So I know that there is a 0 at x equals negative 3. Perfect. That's one of my answers. Well, how many answers am I supposed to have, though? Ah. Remember how we said that the highest exponent is the number of answers you should have? That means I am missing two answers. I am going to use synthetic division now to help me find the other two answers. Because if we look back at the graph, I don't see two other zeros. What do you think that might mean? Well, let's use this synthetic division to figure it out. So if x equals negative 3 is a 0, wouldn't that mean that x plus 3 is a factor of this cubic? And we just said that if something's a factor, when we do the division, we should get a remainder of 0. Let's do the division and see if we get the remainder of 0, just to make sure. Okay, so I'm going to be doing this problem. I'm going to be doing 2x cubed plus 9x squared plus 14x plus 15 divided by x plus 3. Let's do synthetic division. Right here, this is telling us to put a negative 3 in the box. Oh, notice, right, that's what the 0 is. My coefficients are 2, 9, 14 and 15. Good. Now let's do our synthetic division. I'm going to do this one a little bit faster. It is our third example. Bring down the 2. 
multiply 2 and negative 3, I get negative 6. Add down, I get 3. Now I'm going to multiply 3 and negative 3 to get negative 9. Adding these to down, 14 and negative 9 get you 5. 5 times negative 3 is negative 15. Add down, we get 0. Excellent. We have a remainder of 0. That means that this is representing another factor. Okay, so if I write in my answer up here, we just did this division problem. We actually got 2x squared plus 3x plus 5. Right, this had to be the constant. I like to go backwards from there. Okay, so now that means this is a factor and this is a factor. So I really just factored this equation. Okay, so I'm going to take this, I'm going to rewrite it as x plus 3 times 2x squared plus 3x plus 5 equals 0. Excellent. So now we have a factored equation. Oh, we already knew this answer was x equals negative 3. There's one of our answers that we already knew. How do you find the answers from a quadratic? I would use quadratic formula. Right, so quadratic formula, x equals negative b plus or minus square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. All right, so here we know that a is 2, b is 3, and c is 5. Here I go with quadratic formula. So x equals negative 3 plus or minus the square root, 3 squared, I'll just write 9 for now, minus 4 times 2 times 5 all over 2 times 2. Okay, now I'm going to put this part in my calculator. So I still have negative 3 plus or minus the square root. This turned out to be negative 31 over 4. When we have the square root of a negative number, that means we have an imaginary answer. That's why we didn't see the zeros on this graph in the first place. So I'm going to say our answers are x equals negative 3 plus i root 31 over 4. And I'll squeeze it in over here. Negative 3 minus i root 31 over 4. And don't forget we have the negative 3. So we have all three answers, but we needed to do synthetic division to find the imaginary ones. Okay, so I've given you some problems to do on your note sheet on the back. Give those a try.